Hey y'all, how many of you guys have ever had steakums? It's shaved steak that's been frozen, they're super thin, and they cook up really quick. Well, I've got a steakum recipe idea for you today. We're gonna make a gluten-free, low-carb, Philly cheesesteak skillet. This is gonna have everything that you like in a cheesesteak sandwich, except for the bread. We like eating this in a bowl by itself with a green salad next to it. It's easy, it's quick, it's perfect for a weeknight meal. I'm Jamie with Savory Saver. I share gluten-free recipes, tips, tricks, and resources to make your gluten-free lifestyle easier. So please hit that subscribe button and let's get started. Okay, y'all. So I've got a box of steakums here. It is a 21 ounce box. And this box is the larger of the boxes that they carry. They also carry a nine ounce box. So if I was making this meal with a nine ounce box, I would use the whole box for dinner. And with this one, since it's about double the weight, I'm gonna use about half of it. So the steaks, once you get in there, of course, are separated with wax paper in between each one. So I'm gonna take about half of them. So let's see. Sometimes you gotta get in there with your knife even with the wax paper in between. So that's what we have left. I'm gonna put that back in the freezer. These break up quite a bit in the pan anyway, but I like to give them a quick cut just so once they're in the pan, they're already partially done for me. So I just remove all of these pieces of wax paper and just stack everything together. And they do peel off pretty easy. So each serving is considered two steaks. So the big box has 14 servings in it. And if it breaks a little bit, it's okay. Because we're gonna cut it up anyway. all our wax paper off to the side. These just stack up. And then all I do guys is I make one cut all the way across, all the way down, just to break it up some. So I cut it into strips and that just makes it easier so I can throw all of it right into the skillet at once. So I'm gonna put these off to the side and let's get to cooking and get this done. Okay guys, so I've got a large skillet here and I am gonna use just a little bit of oil and go really minimal on this because those steaks are gonna put out some grease and we don't need to add anything extra. We'll get plenty of flavor from that so we don't need any extra oil. So just a drizzle, maybe take the spray oil and use it and you wanna heat that pretty high. I've got it on medium high. So I'm going to let that come up to temp and then we'll drop our veg. So while this heats up, the vegetables that I use are super simple. I mean, we're talking Philly cheesesteak sandwich that's not a sandwich. So I've got probably a medium onion that I have sliced into strips. So use as much onion as you like. I tend to go a little lighter on that only because Tara doesn't like it as much, but it's what I eat. I like the onion. Also, one bell pepper, any color you like. Uh, I've got a little bit of green and a little bit of yellow in here today. And what I do is I cut it into long strips and then I cut those strips in half. And what that does is it just stretches it out a little bit more, makes it look like a little more pepper and it stretches it out so we make sure we get more pepper in our servings. If you want, you could totally add mushrooms into this, either a small can of mushrooms or fresh mushrooms, if you like mushrooms and stuff like that. I also have two to three cloves of garlic, so we will add that in there for a little extra flavor. A lot of times at the end, I will throw in some fresh parsley if I have it. If I do not have any fresh parsley, I will either add a little bit of Italian seasoning 
or a little bit of dried parsley. So we'll probably add something in there towards the end. For our cheese, I'm not very picky about my white cheeses uh, for something like this. So I'm gonna use up this Italian bag that's open and then probably some of this mozzarella and provolone, which is probably a little more traditional to a Philly cheesesteak. So we'll add that at the end. So this is hot enough now, so let's add our stuff to it. Our peppers, our onions. Once that's in there, give it a good toss. Guys, we're not trying to make these cooked all the way through. We just wanna take a little bit of the rawness off of it. Once you've tossed that all around, you can add some salt and pepper to it. If you wanted to add some spice to this, you could put in some crushed red pepper or you could use a jalapeno that's been seeded. That would be good in here for some heat. You could throw in some sliced pepperoncini if you wanted a little brininess to it. Guys, once these have been in for a few minutes, like I said, we don't want anything super soft. We don't want it to turn mushy. So it can still have a little bit of bite to it, especially now because we still have to add our steak to it and top it with our cheese. So I'm going to add my steak to it. All those strips, we're gonna go right in. Now you wanna start tossing all that around. And if you find that you're in the middle of trying to make a salad to go with dinner or something else to, as a side dish, what I like to do sometimes is I will pull the peppers and onions out and put them in a separate bowl and then add my steak and cook it separately and then add everything back in. Sometimes that makes it a little easier when you're tossing in a big pan to cook the steak down. Another thing you could add to this would be some Worcestershire sauce if you wanted some kind of seasoning that way. We're gonna let this cook down and keep moving it around. It's probably gonna take three or four minutes. We just want all the meat cooked through and it'll be, once it darkens up, you're done. Since I don't have any fresh parsley today, let's add a little bit of dried at this point. Gotta let that flavor get into everything. And guys, we always do this as a skillet because we don't really find any good gluten-free sub rolls. So if you know of any, please leave that information in the comments below for myself as well as for other people watching this video. I'm sure we can all use some good bread options for this that are gluten-free. And as this cooks, again, there's quite a bit of fat and grease that is let out of those steaks. So if you wanna take care of some of that, what you can do is get a paper towel and start moving it around the pan with your tongs and that will absorb some of that grease. And guys, this is really just about done. And since I forgot to add it earlier, that garlic, that goes in just before I add the steak usually. So put all that in there. We'll stir it around. Garlic cooks really quick, so it'll be fine adding it at this point. Now guys, we just need to add our cheese and melt it. So, You're gonna add anywhere from a cup to a cup and a half of cheese probably, depending on what your family likes. So add that all over the top. If you didn't wanna use shredded cheese, you could get cheese slices, that would work great. And once you've added your cheese, cut that thing back to low. We don't need it high anymore. And we're gonna cover it with a lid just until it melts. Okay guys just been a minute or so and we're done all the cheese is melted 
everything's cooked through. The only thing left to do is to dig in. Guys, that's it. We're done with dinner. Gluten-free, low-carb, Philly cheesesteak skillet. It's an easy steak and recipe idea. I hope you guys give this a try. Please leave me any comments about it below, and I hope to see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.